From pots to planters, there are a lot of options out there. Garden guy Dale K joins us now live with some tips on how to pick out the perfect ones for our plants. Good morning to you, Dale. Good morning to you. You know, it absolutely makes sense. There's so many different types of plants that naturally there'd be all these different types of pots for them to go with. But really, what is the right pot for the right plant and how do you choose that perfect pot? for that perfect plant. It can be a little bit of a tongue twister and a little bit of a quandrum when you, there's so many different types of materials that are available. So let's start to break it down for you, picking out the perfect pot for the perfect plant. Firstly, there is something called a decorative pot, and that is a pot that doesn't have any drainage holes in it. If Strummy takes a look inside there, you can see no hole, no hole. This is what we call a decorative pot. It's kind of a fashion statement for your home and also for your plant. And the pot just sits in it's like its little grow pot, I guess. It just kind of camps out in there just like that. You take it out and you water it. That is a decorative pot. So we'll just leave those two right there. The next one is a grower pot. It's usually a thin walled pot that uh, commercial growers will actually grow their plants in and that's what you'd find at the, at the garden shop when you're, when you're buying your plants. You can recycle these, start your veggies and all sorts of things at home. Just give them a wash out before you reuse them. That's the grower pot right there. Terracotta is a very common type of pot. You'll find them almost anywhere and it's one of my favorite pots because it has a traditional shape that traditional shape, which is vase-shaped, um, narrow at the bottom, tall at the top, actually creates great porosity with drainage of your, of your soil. So a vase-shaped pot is really good, and also a porous material like this is, uh, makes for easy watering as well. When you're doing your container gardens outside in the spring, you can do odd numbers, so different groups of sizes and threes and fives work really well. Of course, if you've got a formal setting, two pots on either side of your doorway is just fine, but threes and fives work really nice for a grouping of container gardens. There are some specialty containers, like this aquaponics uh, pot that you could even put maybe like a little fish in there. There's moss pots as well. And then orchid pots, if you find pots that have these big holes in the side, that's for sphagnum moss, that is your perfect orchid pot. For your outdoor containers, concrete, plain old concrete, is coming back into fashion. The great thing about concrete is it's, um, it's very solid. It's not going to blow around in the wind, and that makes it really desirable. There's also a lot of resin pots on the market, which is really beneficial because they are lightweight. And I guess the lightweight factor, which is, which is nice, is you can move them around easy, move them in and out of frost as well. I do like these for something fun. These are like little pouch uh, planters. They have little cutouts in the back, and you'd pop you know, maybe some impatience or petunias in there, and it creates a spectacular display, particularly if you hang them along a fence line. That looks really fun. And then there's also all these different types of containers that will go on deck railings as well, and the ones that you can direct seed into and also just pop those, plant those right into the veggie garden. Make sure you put good potting soil in there, and you, then you will have the perfect pot for the perfect plant. Back to you. Yeah. It, it does make a difference too, getting the right pot. And then you maybe change the colors in your home or whatever. You change the color of your pot and the look of your pot. Exactly. I like it. All right, Dave.